I believe that the decisions made by you and this company have harmed your, your customers. Um, Mr. Tenev, would you be willing to commit today to voluntarily pass on the proceeds of the payment for order flow to Robinhood customers? Congresswoman, I, I appreciate that question. When, uh, when the statement you refer to was made, uh, I believe 2015 or 2016, it was before Robinhood forced the entire industry to drop commissions and replicate our business model, which made payment. So is that a, 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 I should take that as a no, you're not willing to pass on the proceeds of payment for order flow to your customers? When, when uh, the other brokers dropped- no, I'm just talking about today, right now. Payment for order flow, Congresswoman, allows for commission-free trading. In the mm -hmm. context of trading commissions, um, it's a much larger source of revenue in the past than payment. Mr. Tenef, I, I apologize, and it's I I don't want to be rude. I just have limited time. Um, but if removing the revenues that you make from a payment for order flow uh, would cause the removal of free commissions, doesn't that mean that trading on Robinhood isn't actually free to begin with? Because you're just hiding the cost, the cost in terms of potentially poor execution or the cost of lost rebates to your customers. So certainly, Congresswoman, Robinhood is a for-profit business and needs to generate some revenue to, to, to pay for the costs of running this business. People were initially skeptical that the model, even with payment for order flow, would work when you remove commissions. And I think we've proven that otherwise by making this the standard model by which brokerages operate now. If you get an order from Fidelity and you get an order from uh, Robinhood and you're paying for the Robinhood order flow, is that customer getting, is the Robinhood customer getting as good a price as the Fidelity customer? The execution quality that we can provide as measured in terms of price improvement is heavily related or correlated to the size of the order that we receive. So if I were to speculate- I, I didn't, don't, don't tell me that it's a, that there are other factors involved and take us down another road. I'm asking you a clear question. Assuming same size of order, one comes in from Robinhood, one comes in from Fidelity. So as, as I was trying to explain, because the Robinhood order comes from a community a community of traders who tend to trade in smaller size. That isn't my question, sir. You're evading my question by making up other questions. Let me repeat. Two identical orders come in. Same stock, same quantity. One's from Robinhood, one's from Fidelity. What happens? The quality of the execution varies by the channel of the order. This is a commonly understood phenomena in economics that channels matter. So, for example, when you go get a mortgage, a mortgage from J.P. Morgan to their clientele has a different rate of interest than a mortgage. Okay, from let me a reclaiming my time, sir. Who gets the better deal? The one that comes from a broker who is uh, paying, uh, being paid for order flow, and one not. Can you testify that they, that on balance there is no difference, assuming the same size of the order? So as I said earlier, size of the order is only one factor. Other you factors, are doing a great job of wasting my time. You should, my, if you're going to filibuster, you should run for the Senate. Why did Robinhood restrict the buying, but not the selling of GameStop? And why did folks get locked out on the buy side only? Ranking member McHenry, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to address that. Uh, the reason that Robinhood First of all, let me say Robinhood is always committed to providing access. It's in our name. It's in everything that we do. Uh, the decision to restrict GameStop and other securities was driven purely by deposit and collateral requirements imposed by our clearing houses. So uh, buying, uh, but, but, buying, but why, securities but why? Is, buying securities why? pieces are why? requirements. Selling does not. Moreover, uh, preventing customers from selling is a very difficult and painful experience where customers are unable to access their money. So we don't want to impose that type of experience on our customers unless we have no other choice. And even though I recognize customers were 
very upset and disappointed that we had to do this. I imagine it would have been significantly worse if we prevented customers from selling. Uh, let's be crystal clear. That decision you made to restrict the buying but not the selling of GameStop was based what was it based on pressure from anyone on the witness panel here today? Not at all. Zero pressure from anyone. It was a collateral depository requirement decision made by our Robinhood Securities president. Do you believe your lack of candor with your customers might have contributed to the wild speculation and confusion that resulted in the aftermath of your trading restrictions? Look, I'm sorry for what happened. Um, I apologize. And I'm not going to say that Robinhood did everything perfect and that we haven't made mistakes in the past. But what, what I commit to is making sure that we improve from this, we learn from it, and we don't make the same mistakes in the future. And Mr. Plotkin, you made the comment in your testimony a minute ago that you were not trying to manipulate stock. Yet, if you're, if you're short selling a stock 140%, um, for me, on the outside looking in, it looks like that's exactly what you're doing. Explain to me why that's not manipulating a stock. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman. Uh, you know, for us, um, I can't speak to other people that were shorted. Anytime we short a stock, we, we locate a borrow. Uh, our systems actually force us to find a borrower. So we always, you know, short stocks within the context of all the rules. So I believe that the short interest in GameStop was, was exceptional. And I, I'm not sure it's worth us delving into legislative corrections for a, a very unique situation in terms of the extreme size of the short interest. I will say that all of the large market participants, in fact, every bank, every hedge fund does have to comply with the requirement to borrow shares to short shares in the course of their day in and day out business. The practice of naked shorting was, was largely curtailed by SEC mandate years ago. I have to ask this. Uh, you said that you didn't talk to anybody of Citadel, Citadel Securities. Did anyone in your organization since January 1st contact Robinhood? Are you asking if we've had contact with Robinhood? With respect to with respect with respect to GameStop and and what we're obviously talking about. So Congressman, we offered to have my colleague who manages that relationship be here today instead. He has firsthand knowledge. We, of course, are talking to Robin Hood routinely in the ordinary course of business. We manage a substantial portion of their order flow. Well, I understand that, but did you talk to them about restricting or doing anything to prevent people from buying, not selling, but buying in game stock? Let me be anybody in your organization. Let me be perfectly clear. Absolutely not. On January 28th, you represented uh, to the media that there was no uh, liquidity problem. Isn't it true that being concerned about having enough capital uh, to meet deposit requirements, isn't that a liquidity problem? Or could you just answer yes or no? Chairwoman Waters, I appreciate the opportunity to address that. Just yes or no? We always felt comfortable with our liquidity and the additional capital that Robinhood raised. Please answer yes or no. We always I felt get through my five liquidity. minutes. I don't have time. I just need a yes or no answer. I, I stand by my statement. The additional capital we raised wasn't to meet capital requirements or deposit so requirements. The Excuse See, me. I'm reclaiming my time. June 2020. Um, Alex Kearns, who was 20 years old at the time uh, from Naperville, Illinois, killed himself largely thanks to a, a, a bug in the Robinhood system. The bug was that he turned on the app, said he owed $730,000 that he did not have because of options positions that he thought canceled out but didn't appear to. He called the helpline. The helpline, of course, was not manned, as we've discussed. Um, he sent several panicked emails, three to be precise, did not receive a response. Ultimately, there was a response from the email saying that, in fact, his positions were covered, but by that point, it was too late because he had taken his own life. Let's imagine right now that we are today's version of Alex Kearns. I'm nervous. I think I've got an exposure. 
and I call your helpline now. Let's call and let's listen in the time we have remaining to what I'm going to hear on the other end of the phone. Thanks for calling Robin Hood. Please visit us at robinhood.com or on our app for support. If you have an urgent greeting need, please make sure to include details of your order when reaching out. Thanks and have a great day. Is retail, individual retail participation in the marketplace gambling, casino gambling, or uh, using funny money. Mr. Gill, why don't we just start with you? I believe it's an opportunity for investors to participate in the market just as institutionals participate. You recommended uh, GameStop uh, before. Would you buy their stock now at roughly 45? It started at 48 earlier today. You were talking about buying it and being happy uh, when it hit cross 20. So are you buying that stock today? Well, let me just say that investing can be risky, and my particular approach to investing is rather aggressive and may not be suitable for anyone else. But for me personally, yes. Down, down, 